Today I'm going to show you guys how to install a catch can into an NA Nissan 300ZX. Second part of this video, uh, we're actually going to be doing it the kind of easy way where it doesn't require much of like a plenum pole or anything. So if you want to do it a little more in depth way that involves freeze plugs, that'll be the second portion of this video. The third portion I will cover and show you how the lines are ran on its wind turbo. I have it all hooked up on my drift car, so it'll be fairly simple for me to show you guys. Pretty straightforward. It's nearly the exact same as here. Without further ado, let's get to work. We're actually going to be using the cheap $30 Amazon catch can that you can get. Evil Energy brand. If you can find these at your AutoZone, pick these up. Grab four of them, six feet sections. I don't know exactly how much because I do it this way usually because it's much cheaper. You can get this for eight bucks. This is three of these. And this was 50 bucks. Big price difference. So if you can, just use these. You'll have four main hoses and you'll have plenty of left over. Got us a couple 5 8 coolant bypass caps. You can get 5 8 freeze plugs if you're going to do the freeze plug method. You need two. I would grab three or four just in case. Usually they're like a dollar. So just in case you push it too far in like I did, I did two per side instead of one. And we have an assortment here that we can use to cap a smaller PCV port since we're doing it the simple way. We also have razor blade, 8 mil for the hose clamps that we're going to use for all this. And then a good old set of pliers. Honestly, pretty straightforward. Right here, you've got a PCV hose back here. You need to remove that. Not only that side, you also have one over here that's probably going to be a little bit harder for you to get. It is your PCV right here on the side. If yours are the original rubber, you may just have to cut and break them off because they're probably pretty uh, brittle. We will be capping each of these ports here. Both of these 5 eighths, you will be capping those with those heater plugs. And since we're doing it the simple way and not plugging the 5 eighths uh, spot in the back, you'll just put a cap here on this elbow. I know it's not very easy to see, but it's the only place for your PCV. Next, let's pull off these PCVs. You can get access right here, and then you should be able to get access from the top, usually it will be pretty difficult as there's really just not enough room here. This hard elbow right here is the one you're gonna cap. I just got a light so we can see a little bit better. Pull that hose and then pull this on both sides. Pretty self-explanatory. Once you pull this hose out, you'll have this elbow PCV nipple right here exposed and you'll have one right here on your intake as well. These are the two ports where we're going to be hooking up the catch can. We're going to be pulling air from in right here, and the out portion will be coming right back here, recirculating back into the intake. This is so all of the oil condensation comes through, gets filtered through the filter, condensates, and then the clean air goes back into the engine. Before we start routing these, let's go ahead and grab our assorted caps, our 5 8s right there. Take your 5 8s put it on your PCV valve itself and then put a hose clamp on it if you have use the one from this if not use a worm gear hose clamp tighten your worm gear clamp looks like that was the only thing I could use these were slightly too big we got the smaller side done I forgot to mention you can get these for like seven bucks at any auto zone now this side is all deleted Let's move on to this side. This side is gonna be much harder to get to, especially if you have your brackets down here for like your EGR, AIV, and all that. Luckily, this one I deleted, because this is my old Z. Reinstall your 5 8 cap right here and right here. Once you have those two caps on, you are done with the caps. Remove this hose, PCV, hose clamp, and a hose clamp right down there, and then slide that off. Now, if your hoses are old and original, throw them in the bin. Next, pull your nose panel off so you can get access here down in your front intake airbox area. Open some of your 5A heater hose. Now, probably the easiest way to go about this is to just take your heater hose, put it up here on this pipe, and then you will route it down here beside your intake, or actually beside your radiator, and out towards the front in front of the condenser and radiator right here. I like my work to be kind of symmetrical or precise. So after I put it on, I will actually take it off to measure it and cut the next hose the same size. 
so they can lead to the exact same place. Now that it's hooked up, route your hose out, down and outwards into the nose panel area. As you can see here, the six foot section has about two foot extra, so you could really get away with about four. And we're just gonna tee both of these right here in front of the AC condenser, which honestly, I completely forgot about those to get them at the store. So I'm gonna have to rob them off my drift car, at least so we could finish this for, for the night, because this isn't my car anymore and he needs it for work tomorrow. And I'm just gonna route the next one all the way through and then cut it where I want it. Next, let's go ahead and grab a hose and connect it there and try to route it back along this way and back down so we try not to kink the hose. This little kink is acceptable, but any 90 degree kink is not good. Once you get both of your hoses down here, go ahead, take a T fitting and place it in between the two of them and then put hose clamps on them as well. Then this lower pipe here will be what actually runs to your catch can. Once you get all your lines routed and both ran into a T and you're ready to put your two oil catch can like in and out lines are and you take your oil catch can take it apart and you have this little piece right here this is actually your filter it comes with steel wool like so but this is not very fine steel wool but i recommend grabbing this pack from harbor freight it's like two or three dollars and it is much finer and it will do a lot better job at filtering. Cut yourself as much as you need to pack this pretty firmly. And just a little bit more. Make sure you get all your little debris out. Don't want that going back in your motor. Stuff it. Once you have your filter packed in, take it back to your catch can lid and screw that back down. So pretty much what's going on here is you got your air coming in it's coming through here, down into the catch can with oil condensation. It condensates, drips, and then the air is then pulled back up here, back into the intake. So you're pulling in full clean air and not a bunch of oil dirtying up your intake tract. Grab your larger uh, 5 8 size, and instead of just threading these straight in, I recommend that you grab some thread tape Teflon tape, whichever, and wrapping some thread tape on your threads. And do that to both as well. Take like an adjustable wrench, unless you got the right size, and then just snug it up. It's literally as easy as that. Before we go back out in the hard to see dark, you can remove this bracket here, which then you can screw into something, or make something that goes through it, like an L bracket, which I've done before, and you can mount this somewhere in your front nose panel area. Here's the custom little bracket that I made to mount this under the nose panel out of the bracket that actually holds your wiring harness in on the firewall. I just went ahead and bent this and shaped it a little bit to mount it right here. And we're gonna run these lines over here around the filter and back into the T here. Probably about a foot of hose between here and your T's. Try to get your can mounted straight up as possible. Here for your outside, you want this to go directly back into your intake here. Your inside is going to come from your valve covers themselves. So follow them lines from your valve covers to that T and run it to the end and out to your intakes. Just like that, we've got our catch can fully hooked up now and the car is actually able to be returned to its owner. Cap your back four spots, run your hoses, from your PCVs up here. T both of them into the same port. Exhaust valve cover to exhaust valve cover. Intake to intake. Run your inside from your valve covers and your outside to your intake. So we'll catch you guys in the morning so we can show you the twin turbo setup and how to do this the proper way with freeze plugs plugging the valve covers themselves. So the other method that we have to block off this and this part right here is with the 5 8 freeze plug. Typically you do this method if you have the engine out. The other way that you can do this is to actually tap this where this fitting's in, tap the valve cover and this fitting 
for a threaded plug so then you can thread it in with sealant and be done with it i don't need to take this out but you put a flat head in it and you can move it like so and then you can just wiggle it back and forth until it comes out once you pull that out clean out the hole itself use some brake cleaner and a rag get all the grease out all the oil and whatever so that way your rtv makes a good seal you can either use ultra gray Typically I use the Nissan liquid gasket and what you'll do is kind of RTV up the side, place it in and slightly tap it in with the tin mill. When I did this on my drift car, I knocked this in a little too far because it didn't fit as tight as I'd like. So what I ended up doing is I actually put one in and then I put another one behind it since the other one traveled too far in my opinion and I felt like I smushed all the RTV off won't hurt to put a second one in there. And if the engine is out, you can actually remove this whole PCV hard line if you have the EGR delete. If not, you can just run a longer hose from here to over here, because you will no longer have that hard line right back here. Now let's move on and show you guys how all this is hooked up on the twin turbo. And again, if you guys have any questions about this process whatsoever, drop it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help you guys and guide you in the right direction. Now, here's our twin turbo. When we were actually installing all that on the NA that we had here the other day, I didn't end up picking up the 5 8 hose tees. You can get these for five bucks a piece at any parts store, or you can get the metal ones. I mean, it's really up to you. The metal one's like 12 bucks, and this is like $5.99. But it's pretty much the exact same application. Over here, we have this PCV valve cap with the 5 8 cap. Not sure how well you guys can see it, but I actually left the hard line here on the drift car. I don't know why I should have did it when I had it all off, but it happens. So that means I'm just missing the hose over here in the back, because this one's actually plugged. And you can see this PCV is capped as well. Cap both PCVs plug your exhaust valve cover ports or just cap your PCV pipe that carries from this side. Instead of running these to your intake pipes right here like on the NA, you actually hook them up to your recording pipes down here. I'm not sure how visible it is, but this guy right here is going down, literally straight down right there. Yeah, you can kind of see it. That's exact, you can see the hose clamp and that is where it's tightened both of those run up into the front tee both of those in and those will be to your outside of your catch can your inside they're both teed to each side and it comes right up here to your valve cover so you're taking all of your dirty air pulling it in down here into this tube in the catch can filtered down into the bottom back up to each side right back into your intake clean as can be don't overthink it i know a lot of people online make this kind of confusing it's really self-explanatory and pretty forward once you're getting to do it i apologize about the dark stuff at the beginning i was just kind of working with what i got and i didn't have much time that day so i hope you guys understand if not if it is kind of hard to understand, please let me know in the comments. I'll make a second version if I have to, and I'll install one on my own car. But really, I think that's about all there is to installing a catch can on your Z32. I hope this helped you guys out a bunch, and if you would like to help me out, drop a subscribe below and like the video. Stay tuned, and we will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.